Um, let's see. Okay, got it. Uh, yeah. And I have one quick question, Leanne. Do you have a slideshow that you're gonna pull up? So, no, I'm I'm just gonna talk okay. and um, well, this is good, just how it is. Yeah, I, I I'm very low tech, and this is part of my message today. Um, welcome everyone. I'm Leanne Wakabayashi. In case you don't know, I lived in Japan for 30 years. Now, uh, for the last five years, I've lived in Israel, uh, Jerusalem, now Haifa. Uh, and I'm a member of the uh, Writers in Kyoto group and a longtime um, fan and member of the Japan Writers Conference and John Gribble. And I'm really excited to welcome you today to this uh, virtual uh, post-pandemic world where we communicate through screens. So I'd like to talk to you today um, about a kind of alternative journey uh, that I'm, I'd like to put out to you. For, for some of you, you may be familiar with it already, which is what to do when you don't have a huge budget to spend on your book project. Um, I, I'd like to address the alternatives, what we can do instead of um, spending money that we have, spending money that we don't have, spending money that we have to borrow, um, and spending money that doesn't feel like we got our money's worth on. And I can uh, say from experience that uh, it took me nine years to uh, produce from start to finish my memoir, The Wagamama Bride. And during that time, um, I found that hiring people kept me on track. It was great. It was, it, I, I don't regret hiring people for doing editing work um, or uh, doing book proposal work. They, they were helpful at the times, but I would say they were more psychological help than actually practical help. Psychological in the sense that uh, it really helps to have uh, a, an accountability partner or an accountability community. So hiring someone is a way of staying accountable. You still have to do the work. You still have to learn new tech skills. Um, you still have to follow through after the person that you've hired is no longer um, uh, being paid by you for the work. So you've got to continue. So having a accountability partners kind of works on, on a couple of levels, short term uh, paid for help. And then I, what I call the long term account accountability partners, which is joining communities where you share the same interests. And um, I can't say an, enough good things about writers in Kyoto. It's, it's a, a warm and fuzzy group that really is supportive and offers, besides occasional competitions, a platform for uploading your stories and, um, and uh, kind of getting to know other people who share your interests or who are knowledgeable about things that maybe you never even thought about that were that are very interesting and maybe relevant to um, to the writing that you're doing. So I would say that um, joining a, a joining communities is really where it's at as far as um, establishing your presence before your book is even done. You could, because once you start talking about it, you're, you're on track. You can see the book ahead. Other people are cheering you on. You stumble and you don't know what to do, where, what, where to turn to, and uh, somebody gives you great advice. Uh, and I, I give you a, an example is um, at, uh, in the early stage, I was unsure what to do. Um, with uh, with a book proposal, I thought, how how detailed do I need to be in a book proposal? And 
uh, I shared a, a stage years ago with the wonderful writer, uh, uh, Tracy Slater, who was very generous in sharing uh, her uh, contacts with, uh, uh, with me for a, a book proposal expert in America who I then hired. And then she went beyond the call of duty. Her name is Jill Rothenberg, and I could give you the contact information if you're interested. But she was one of those people who really went beyond the call of duty to um, help me realize that the book proposal that I was shaping needed um, more of a, a, diff a slightly different direction as to where the book was going. So sometimes you get really added value by hiring people. And I'm, I'm very, very grateful to her because what Jill said to me, and it was about the time of my mother's death in 2016. Um, and just hearing about my mother, she said, where's your mother in the story? She said, your mother, your mother's a, a main ca a character. Now it would never occur to me, but somebody who had, taken a vested interest in my story in seeing it succeed, was right there with me, picking up on the personal details of my life and then kind of feeding it back to me so I could move forward with, with my book. So that in that way, it was, it was just tremendous to hire someone like her. At the same time, I really wanna emphasize that I got equal parts support and I and I really um, I, I enthusiastically encourage you to as well is to seek writing partners accountability partners when you sit down and in, in, uh, go to a cafe and you you, you become very anti-social with your friend or your partner and you say we're going to write for two hours you're there doing the work, you're doing there the work. And then you could share afterward what the experience was like, but there's something so grounding and supportive and energizing in having this accountability a partner who's either there with you in a cafe or now in this new world of ours on Zoom or sharing a, uh, messages, sharing text, if you can't be in the same room or even the same country, I think it really, really helps to have uh, uh, an accountability uh, partner who is somebody really rooting for you just as you are rooting for them. I've had the experience of writing with partners who shared my topic, which was family life in Japan and specifically Jewish family life in Japan, and more specifically, Shinto, Buddhist, Taoist, Orthodox, Jewish family life in Japan. So I'm going really niche, really, really niche. And I suggest that too, with your book, when you're, when you're right, working on a book, you want to go niche, because you don't want to cover what other people are covering. You want to put, assemble things in, in new ways to make it interesting. Uh, to bring in a new conversation to your topic. So that was really helpful to have these cafe talks. Another thing that really was very, very helpful was to actually go on retreat with um, my writer friend in the UK. Uh, some of you may have heard of her. Her name is Susanna Jones. She wrote The Earth Earthquake Bird. It was turned into a Netflix movie. And I'll tell you that being with her, she's such a, a humble person, such a grounded person, so focused on, um, on working through the, the struggles of the text that she's in, that it really, really being around her just is a reminder that don't let success get to your head, that every project is new and that we all need support. It's not like you graduate from <clears throat> needing um, a, a writing partners or friends to do feedback with, uh, with you. It's, it's always, always there. And her topic was is very different than mine. She was writing a 1940s um, novel set in Japan. Here I am working on my, my, my Jewish story set in Japan, very different. But sometimes that actually helps 
it helps um, uh, kind of set off new ideas. So these are, uh, I would say, really, really in, um, invaluable uh, ways of, of moving forward with your story to have the accountability partners, friends near you, friends far away from you, friends that you can go visit or go on retreat, and, um, and people who are just as excited as you are to see your book out and to hold it in their hands. You know, we, we've got to do all, whatever it takes to get our book out because there are going to be voices that tell us it's not good enough, it's not ready, somebody else wrote a better book on the subject. You're going to hear all these voices at certain times. And, uh, and so we've got to find these ways of, of powering through. Um, I'd like to switch to, uh, to community support. And what I found very helpful as I went through the process is joining um, the, I'll tell you the exact name. I do not want to, um, to mess up the, because there are two. Okay, Alliance of uh, Independent Publishers. There's a woman called Orna Ross. She is in, um, in Ireland and she runs this wonderful group. It's free, it's on Facebook, and uh, it's where you can get all kinds of uh, free advice and support from people who are, uh, who've experienced what you've experienced and are stuck in the tech, more I would say technical aspects very, very helpful. Like when you're ready to upload to Amazon and you're not sure how to approach the um, ebook aspect of it and you don't know whether to uh, sign up for the, the 30, uh, the 90 day, excuse me, the 90 day uh, uh, ebook promotion package so that, so that Amazon pushes your book out into the world when at the same time you're hearing that Ingram Sparks, the largest distributor in the world, uh, also wants to take your book and put it into libraries or into book clubs and places where Amazon can't reach. And you're confused. Do I go with Ingram Sparks? Do I go with Amazon? Do I put my uh, only publish on Ingram Sparks, the softback, or do I publish on both platforms? It gets really, really confusing out there. And the, this, excuse me, the Alliance is very friendly and supportive and people will answer really in, in depth um, in a response. Uh, when I decided to go with Ingram Sparks, and this is often the case with people who are technically challenged like me, um, <laughs> I spent hours and hours and I couldn't get the book up. And I got so frustrated. I, I said, what am I doing wrong? And then what happened was Karen Hill Anton, who we know is a member of, of the Japan Writers Conference and writes, writes in Kyoto. She's in Japan for many years. She had just published her book and she was the one who answered me and said, contact this woman in upstate New York. She'll sort you out. And in a week, I was sorted out. The book was up on Ingram Sparks, and it was um, it was an, an investment of of less than two hundred dollars, which I considered for all the amount of time that I was spending. It was very very helpful. So um, I would say that these these people who are on these communities really want to find you the the shortcuts to save you money. They're not. They're, they're not, they're not vested in offering, offering you these big ticket purchase items that sometimes um, you can uh, be uh, stumble into uh, when you're new to the publishing world and you want to get your book out and, and, and have the best possible chance of it succeeding. There's a, a third area I'll talk about, and then I'm gonna open it up to questions. And, uh, and this third area is about, we're all writers. 
we need to use our, our writing skills to for self-promotion. And doing this before the book is out is, is really essential. Whatever your topic is, you are the expert in it. So share your expertise either on your website or your Facebook page. Better yet, write for local publications or publications that share your interest. It's really a a fantastic thing to connect with other uh, people in your tribe. And, and what better way to do that than to share um, your expertise with them. And then they become your instant supporters when the book comes out, when the book is finally ready, they're, they're also thrilled to be part of this process that, that you, you've um, kind of um, welcomed them into just as you are becoming supporters of their projects by sharing what you know, because expertise doesn't go one way as, as, as we know. We all are missing puzzle pieces to each other. So joining these communities is, is also a tremendous way to, to realize how much you already know about your subject or even about the publishing process. You, 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 for instance, maybe it's a no-brainer that you have a, a, a local bookstore that you go into, you're a regular customer, you know the owner by first name, and you could go in and talk about your book even before it's published and, and even get advice. What do you think of this title? Um, which section do you think it, it would go in? Or you know, whatever you want to do, you could ask your local publisher so they get excited about your upcoming book as well. This happened in Israel, in Jerusalem, uh, Pomerantz Bookstore, uh, which is the main bookseller in English in Jerusalem, uh, where at first I was very intimidated and shaking as I went up to the, to the book counter. And then I see these nice, friendly young guys behind the counter. I said, come on, get, get over it. Just, just tell them what you've got. So I brought them a manuscript and I said, look, it's not finished, but it's almost there. What, what, what would it take to get into your bookstore? Just asking in that way really, really turned things around. And from there, we worked together um, until it was done. It was in the bookshop window. They put it on display in the back of the store. They had me come in and speak. And they did it because they saw that it was a win-win situation that I was bringing customers to them as well by telling them about uh, the placement of the, of the book in their store. So we're helping the book publishers as well. Please, please keep that in, in mind. Okay, so we, we probably all know that the big potato in, in Japan, Kinokunya, which by the way has branches in more than a dozen, more than, maybe more than 20, uh, cities around the world. I think in Texas alone, they have five. It's unbelievable how many um, branches they have. So if you're writing about Japan topics, you can query them as well. I did. I sent out a whole slew of letters. I got one reply. The book did get go into a shop in Texas, but even better, it got into Kinokunya in Tokyo. And I'd like to share with you the... Um, the uh, connection, how I did it. One minute, here we go. Leanne, just be careful with your microphone uh, not to touch it. We're hearing a lot of feedback on our end. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm glad you, you stopped me for that. Okay. Maybe, I, maybe I'm spitting into it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a built-in one. Okay, books, books, Kinokunya, Tokyo, foreign books. If you go to that uh, uh, Facebook page, there's actually a really nice human being. I don't know who he or she is at the other end, but they actually answer authors' queries about their book about placing books. 
I'll read it to you again. It's books, Kinokunya Tokyo, hyphen foreign books, if you want to reach out to them. Another source are book clubs, joining book clubs that share your interests. Joining book clubs, sometimes goodreads.com has a book club that is in your niche area. I found a, a, a Jewish authors book club on uh, uh, Goodreads, so I, I joined it. And uh, otherwise, you could start your own book club on Goodreads or on another platform on Facebook to rouse interest in your subject and for people who share your interest to find you. I hope what I'm getting across is that this is really fun work that this I don't even want to call it work but it's it's fun and it's being an author from day one when you start engaging with your community because there's one way that uh, people who are not in the book world often kind of want to emphasize to you they says they said it's a, it's a great book but how many books did you sell usually mothers say that um, but what, what I've experienced is it's a great book. How many friends did you make? How many lives did you change? How many, how many, um, uh, people, uh, came to you and said, wow, I've had an experience like this, or, um, you've really inspired me to write my own book or finish my own book. This, you can't put a, a monetary value on these things. And yet, I want to say that when we go, when we're tempted to spend, a, drop thousands of dollars on this high end editorial service or this high end um, public relations service, we, we really have to be careful that they're they're using the, the carrot and stick of book sales, but they never guarantee that the book sales will come. That's, that's our risk. So it, I would say that I, I prefer the organic way, which is to build up the audience. Uh, when you publish a book, and, and I'm talking as an independent author, I'm not talking as an author for Random House or, 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 or uh, as Stonebridge Press, I'm talking about somebody who, who, who hand built the book from scratch. That means that I'm vested in this book for life. It's not like a publishing house that gives us three months to get the book up and running. We're, we're in it for the long run, which means that our identity is, is connected with, with this book. And wherever we go, we have this opportunity throughout our lives to engage with with our interest group so it's a constant reminder the book is a constant reminder that we have with us this amazing calling card to connect us with the people who really matter in our lives who are our tribe who share our interests so i could go on but i'd really like to open the floor to questions that you may have and um and uh, leave it, and let's go from there. Okay, just a moment. If anybody has a question, please approach the computer. There's a microphone built inside. She won't be able to hear you from the back. So feel free. Step up. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Could you say the alliance group details again? Yes. Um. I will. I will. Just a minute. I want to make sure. Okay. One second. I'm gone. I'm just gonna. Yeah, there's the Alliance of Independent Authors. One second. Alliance of Independence Authors. Yes, that is, that's the one that I, uh, 
by Orna Ross <laughs> found very helpful. There's another one here. I mean, it gets tricky because there's, there's another one which is uh, in the independent authors, independent, pub, sorry, independent publisher alliance. It goes by a couple of names. Yeah. Independent Publishers Alliance is another one, but the one, just look for the one with Orna Ross. That's the one I recommend. Uh, by the way, Orna Ross is, uh, uh, does podcasts. Uh, whenever you, before you go and spend money on any service, I recommend that you go to YouTube or to podcasts to check how these people sound, what their message is, whether they're, vibe is attractive to you, whether their message is actually um, delivered for free on one of these streaming platforms so you don't actually have to pay for it. You, or you might find, wow, this person really is an expert and I really want to talk to her. Fine, that's great. So, but, but if, they're, if you can't find their presence, um, in book form, on podcasts, or um, on, in a video stream service like YouTube or TEDx, I, I would really steer away from, from that kind of a person. Is that okay with the, the Alliance question? Yes, I think we, Alliance of Independence Authors and Independent yes. Publisher Alliance. It's Alliance of Independent Authors independent authors okay Thank yeah you. and then there's another group that's called independent book oh. publishers association but that's a different one okay independent book publisher association i believe that one is from the us and the alliance is in the uk if i'm not mistaken okay thank you madam okay you are welcome we have uh, another question coming up Okay. How do you go about finding the people to do your book cover? Um, I know a great person in Japan who I worked with. I'd be happy to recommend. She's in Shizuoka. Do you speak some Japanese? Badly. <laughs> Badly. <laughs> Me too. Me too, but... but I brought out the English in her. So if uh, she's, she's lovely to, to work with, I can recommend someone. What I would say is this, in, in, you, to, to get your cover the way you want it, you have to, and this is again, a fun thing to do, is go to the, browse the bookstores, look online, see the covers that you like, and make a file and put all the covers that you're really attracted to into it. So when it comes time to working with a designer, you say, I like the colors in this one. I love the font in this one. I love the, the size of, of, the, um, of the central images. It's nice and small. Or you could say, I just want text. I want jazzy text I, and, and a bright color. That's all. So you've got to know what you want. Otherwise, um, it's, it's, it, it leaves things too much up in the air, if you know what I mean. Hi, Leanne. Um, you told us, the camera's up here, okay. You told us uh, a, a lot about your experience, good experiences working with people who gave free advice through the groups, communities. Uh, please tell us about your best and worst experiences working with paid service providers. Oy vey, do I have to? Um, <laughs> um, all right, the, the worst one was I, I found this woman on LinkedIn who kind of set herself as, up as a, a, a hot shot promoter in New York City. So I thought, okay, she'll get my book into the New York Times magazine and blah, blah, blah. You know, I, I already had the whole, I had the, the, the film rolling in my head and I figured for her, for her price, which was $5,000 a month, 
that she would do her job. You know, I just assume that if someone charged that much, they jolly well will, 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 will follow through. So I sent her the money and um, she uh, started reading the manuscript and then she, she sent me back something strange. She, she started editing the back cover blurb in a way that showed me that she wasn't reading the book. <laughs> I was shocked. And then as she sent me back the first several pages of, of what she was editing, and again, she was changing things uh, to show off her J Japanese expertise, which was sub-zero, and making, <laughs> and making errors. And luckily, luckily, the reason I also chose this woman was because uh, an old friend from New York had worked with her 20 years ago when she was merely 60. Now she was 80. And, and I don't want to say people who are 80 have lost their marbles because they, they don't. Maybe one marble was missing. And, and what happened was um, I said, this is absolutely unacceptable. I said, I said, this is this isn't happening. And she sent me the money back. She just sent me the whole money back. But I was I kind of was in shock because the message was, come on, I'm a writer. I write for publications. So it may not be the New York Times, but OK, it'll be the Jerusalem Post. This is my audience. We know our audiences. We know where we want our stories to appear. So start writing for the publications that you want to see your, your, your book get promoted in. And at the very least, you get a byline at the end of your story saying, uh, so-and-so is the author of blah, blah, blah. And that's, it builds interest that way. So that was my, that was a big shock to me that that, that happened. Um, another thing uh, that happened uh, more recently was that I, I signed up for a, what I thought was a very expensive uh, how to find a book agent course. Uh, I don't know, it was something like hundreds, three, four hundred pounds. And uh, to, to my amazement, I had to download, I don't know, hundreds of, of pages, so many documents uh, to get to the meat of this. And it was so complicated. It was, it really was, she, it was, she'd made it into rocket science mm -hmm. and broke it down into um, so many steps that of course my printer would stop working and then I'd lose the track because it, it was basically a book, but I had to print it out myself. And I found that I was now had a new stress, the stress of administering all these pages and just keeping them in order. What I'm saying was it was, it was overly complicated and I, I got discouraged from it. I thought, this is this is not making me feel good. So that that was that was an, an experience. The, the the process whenever the process gets stressful, back off and 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 just let go for a few days or a few weeks or talk about it with somebody. It shouldn't doesn't need to go in that in that direction. And that again is why we have accountability partners to share what's what's going on and to share recommendations, share advice on, uh, on people who, who are doing great things, who can do great things for us at reasonable, at reasonable prices. Again, I was taken in by this whole book agent business because it seemed like a, a magic pill that if I swallowed it and did the work that I would attract penguin or random house. Well, it doesn't work that way. It, 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 it doesn't work that way. And, and, I'm, and I'll s s tell you why. The woman who wrote the, the course actually had a, a personal family connection to the agent who hired her in the beginning. So come on, please. Um, we just have to be really careful. 
Anyone else? Going once. <laughs> All right, madam, I think we're all done with questions on our end. If you have any parting words that you would like to share with us. Were there any questions? Yeah. Like yes, but some of these chat questions have been sitting here from previous. Okay, let's, I'll take a look. This is the previous event. Okay, we're all good. You're all, you're all good. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, I'd like to uh, talk to you a, just a bit about um, one minute, please. Will I just scroll here? Google Alerts. Are you familiar with Google Alerts? Google Alerts. Um, is, is a way for you to, to type in your uh, interests. Okay, I'll give you an example. I, I typed in Jewish, Japanese, international, family, uh, and um, uh, all right, those two, Jewish, Japanese, international, family, anything in the world that Google catches uh, on that subject matter. Oh, in memoir, in memoir, anything that, that is newly published will come to me in my inbox. So I know instantly who's publishing on my topic anywhere in the world. And oftentimes I've reached out to them or I've offered to review their books or they've reviewed mine. So it's a really wonderful way to ex expand the net so you can um, reach, uh, reach your audience and, and also you know, be inspired by what they're writing about, get new ideas for, for your own story. So Google Alerts is, is a really um, a, great, uh, a great resource. Can I ask, since we have time, if 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 because uh, I'd love to 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 know a little bit about um, about the group. Are are you um, in the midst of who's in the midst of writing a book? Who's published a book already? Can can I, can we can I get a sense of that? Uh, yeah, come on. <laughs> yes. My fault. My fault. No, don't don't worry about it. I'm glad you she have the bravery. Can probably hear me from here. Can you hear her? Leanne? I can. I can't see, but I can hear. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I have published. I've self-published a collection of short stories, ranging speculative fiction. Oh, you're gonna turn it into a great. I've self-published a collection of short stories, all along the like speculative fiction range. I have a novella coming out on Halloween. A slice of life with a reaper's journey. Cross out life, put death, it'll be fun. I have a book about a post apocalyptic adventure, and I have another book about a paranormal um, woman, woman, woman couple with a Yukiona title. Are you familiar with Linda Gould and White Enso no, magazine? No, I'm not. Oh, you've got to, Linda Gould is. Um, somewhere I believe in Kanagawa, and she runs a wonderful online pub, two online publications. One is general Tokyo writing and uh, photography poems. And the other is, is, uh, specifically has to do with the paranormal and occult. And, and so uh, reach out to Linda Gould. Okay, it sounds like, because what, what I'm hearing is, uh, have, you, have you published excerpts or some of the stories in other publications? I have had traditionally published some microfiction, like okay. very, very short fiction. And I weirdly traditionally published video game writing. Uh -huh. But my books themselves are all indie published. I published them myself through Amazon and Rakuten and Kobo and all of that. Great, 
Great. Well, good luck with them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Bacon. Oh, yeah. You're an eloquent speaker. <laughs> you're confident. You can explain about JWC very well. So, well, yeah. her question was how many people are, you have two questions. How many people are working on books now and how many people have published? So, why? Oh, okay. okay. So, how, how many people have published a book already by show of hands? Including me, one, two, three. Put the hands up high. Uh, with, with, within this room, three of us have published, and how many have not published? Oh my. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven people have not published their books yet. How many of us are still writing? Okay, how many of us? <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> So three published, 11 have not published let yet, everybody is still writing. Okay. Uh, from what I'm saying, uh, I, I wonder if you, we could just talk about some of the takeaways that, that you're getting from, from what I'm saying. I'd really like to hear it back, especially the ones who haven't published yet. What, they're, what, kind, what is the first thing that they would want to do after um, hearing, what I'm, hearing this talk? Does what, anyone want to? What, what feedback do you have for Leanne? What did you take away from this, from her presentation? I, can I say something? Yes, please. Hi. Hi. Um, I am honestly incredibly daunted by the process of publishing novels, so I kind of just do it for myself. I don't know if I ever want to publish anything because I'm honestly really scared of the process. Um, but here, I, I just thought I'd, you know, explain that. Um, I have published, like, I do work for like a volunteer magazine here in Japan with like other foreign residents. Um, and I have like published like little art magazine articles before, but like, no like non uh, no fiction writing like I have like a massive series of stories that I just honestly it's like my mental health project but that's like the most that I do I don't know if I'll ever get it published but I did consider maybe like doing self-publishing and just sharing it with my friends <laughs> I don't know um, I don't know if I'll ever like share traditionally publish anything but I, I thought and, and if 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 you had three um three hashtags for what you're writing what would those hashtags be uh fantasy romance uh animal people I don't know <laughs> oh wow so have you have you found groups online for instance animal uh, story writers uh, uh for animals, animal story, animal people, tellers. Um, <laughs> it's see that's part of the reason why I'm so like afraid to publish it because I'm like uh, this is kind of embarrassing. Um, um, I am actually the uh, I'm a volunteer um, regional representative for NaNoWriMo. Um, uh -huh. uh, I am the regional representative for Japan Elsewhere right now. Um, mm -hmm. So I do have like, and we're actually pretty active. So I have a lot of my members that we have like writing groups twice a week. So wow. I do meet with them and, and I, we talk, we, a lot of us are like, like uh, writing a lot of different things, but we all kind of give feedback to each other about like what we're writing. Um, and I mostly just write for fun really, but you know, I have that group. What's, what's your name? Huh? What's your name? Oh, my name's Diane. Hi, Diane. Hello. <laughs> Diane, you know what? I, I, I feel like your hesitation in, in, in this sense of like, like, who am I to be a writer? And, you know, what, what should I be sharing? What it, something like that. But the way I would turn it around is, is we live in these, in these times of where there's a lot of loneliness and confusion and people are, are looking to connect 
They're really looking to connect. And being a writer is a gift, the gift of offering connection to people. So don't hold back, be of service. I, I'd like you to really think that everything, every time you put out your words, you are serving. It's not self-indulgence, -indul it's, it's not narcissistic. This is being of, of service. And if you, and if you're, you're, you doubt it, then reread a story and find out the one line that could really inspire somebody or help somebody something pivotal that you've written that people could go, wow, wow, <laughs> touched, touched by it. Okay, that's good advice. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Anyone else? Yeah, please. Uh, in, in, in answering your question about what did I uh, get from this as I'm starting to think about the uh, publishing process, I really liked your advice on uh, uh, covers, uh, book covers going out and searching uh, at bookstores or online to get an idea of what you would want in a cover to approach whoever you have design. Uh, I, think, I think all your advice is really good. I, I liked that because um, I know that the book cover is a big thing. People look at it and that some people buy it just by the cover. So I really appreciated that advice. It's true. And I just want to take that further and, and talk about the blurb is sometimes you think I've got to pay an exorbitant amount of money for somebody to write my back copy text or my um, jacket text. Well, ask your friends to, to read your book and write, tes write feedback, testimonials of what, or their reactions, because they can be, give you some really as, astute insights into your story. And you, if you're nodding in agreement, that could also be part of the back copy text. You don't have to overthink it. Go and get the support of friends. Another way is to read a lot of back copy um, blurbs and actually type them out. You know, when you type out other people's words, it kind of enters you and you go, okay, it's written in third person. It's written with humor. It's kind of sassy. It, it ends, leads to a question. I don't, I want to open the book because there's a question asked that's raised that I want to know about now. So this is another way of becoming more confident is to actually, just like, just like we're having a, a file, a collection of these covers, to have another file for really good jacket blurbs uh, to help you when it comes time for that. And you could apply that rule to any part of the book, to your own biography, or to, um, to how to write acknowledgments. Acknowledgements are very important. It's a way of really, and maybe not for, for novels, but in, in nonfiction, yeah, you, you do write a lot. Do people write um, acknowledgements for novels? I don't, I, what's the answer there? Yes. They said yes. Okay, okay, so so great. So that, 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 that also helps move the process on because when you start to put together the acknowledgements, you realize, oh my goodness, they're my friends. I don't have to wait till the book is out to acknowledge them. I could give them a call or write them a quick message and ask them this question or that question, or can they read it some uh, read a chapter that I'm stuck on or, or that they're actually featured in. I remember doing that a couple of times with, with people who are in the book, reaching out to them. And it was wonderful to, to do that as well. So right. thank you. Yes. Um, so Lam, to help you answer that question, I'm gonna mention a free resource that, that okay. I know about. It's bookbaby.com. Uh -huh. Writers put blogs up there and they archive them all. You can search on bookbaby.com, search their blogs for any kind okay. of topic related to writing or publishing or anything involving books. 
So for Patrick mm -hmm. looking for a back cover blurb, there's a there's a blog about how to make a good back cover blurb. And mm -hmm. you want information on how to make a good cover. There's a there's right. several blogs on how to make covers. And mm -hmm. They talk about everything involving the whole world of writing and publishing books. And they're all blogs that you can read in one or two minutes. And they're all archived on, at backbaby. Bookbaby.com. Uh, book, book, yeah, book right. And Mark yes. here did, I think, published a book using bookbaby.com, which you can yes. tell them about. <laughs> yes. Uh, this was 10 years back. I published a book through Bookbaby, just digital, and uh, the Miles Davis book. And I think I've garnered two thousand dollars from that book without any promotion or really doing anything. So That's I'm fantastic. Very That's happy great. about that. Yes, but I haven't used Book Baby since. I don't know why. I've been trying KDP and Ingram Spark and the whole spectrum of, of the other yeah. self-publishing things. And, and how has oh, that yeah. gone? Yes. How was and, that uh, going? That was also very good advice about uh, asking your friends to do the blurb because I've written a whiskey book and I have a guy, a close friend of mine, who has a big Instagram page with 25,000 followers called Whiskey Watches. And he written my blurb and that, that means more to me than getting somebody that I don't know to do it. It's more meaningful. And it was free. <laughs> yes. So you don't well, you to... see, you, you look look how this conversation goes. You're telling me about whiskey, and now I can tell you that my son, who's in Tokyo, is, has a big project to export whiskey to Israel. So he'll be very interested in. Well, he, needs, he needs to get in contact with me because I am the whiskey man. <laughs> I, 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 I'm the pontiff of Japanese whiskey. He got really? to go through me if he wants to get some whiskey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so so, what's your name? <laughs> My name is Mark Antomate. Oh, that's going to be a hard one. To I'm just going to type it inside the chat here, and I hope you'll be able to read it. I hope With you can find the chat button. Okay. It just came up. Mark Antomate. It's a one of a kind name. It, it is. It is. Okay. And I'm going to put the book title inside of there as well. The recommend to your son is called 50 Japanese Whiskies. Wow. Okay. And Fantastic, fantastic. So you see, this is where it gets really exciting, you know, being an author or being an author to be and, and having these connections with other people that spark conversations and common interests. I want to leave you with one book that I found really inspiring, uh, really um, uh, timely for this post pandemic phase a world we've entered. It's called Connect the Dots by Christian Bush. I, you want me to put it into the chat? Uh, I'm Connect the Dots by Christian Bush. Bush. Christian. I'll, I'll. And I'll make sure, yeah. Bush is spelled B-U-S-C-H, Christian I Bush. I think it's U-B-U-C-H. B-U-S-C-H or B-U-C-H, no. It wouldn't be B-U-S-C-H, yes. Okay, so the, the, what, what uh, Christian writes about beautifully is how serendipity is happening all around us and how it really makes life magical when we, uh, uh, we stumble up upon people who share our interests or who have missing pieces of, of the puzzle that we've been looking for in life or who can change our direction in a, in a positive way. And just think about it, when we're, when we're writers, when we're authors, we're basically creating um, 80,000 hashtags on an 80,000 uh, word book to connect us to people who share our, our interests. Um, I really, I, I highly recommend reading. If you don't get the book, then look at Goodreads or Amazon to read the reviews. I wrote a review on Goodreads about Christian's book on my page, so you could read it there. And, uh, and know that this is another um, magical spark in the writing process that it's connecting us in, in such beautiful ways, like now with uh, Mark Anton Mate. 
You got it. That's okay, got it. Yes. Okay, I probably run over, but I really will. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Chris, being here. All right, thank you, madam. It's been much appreciated.